just uh, see land today and uh, it was pretty curious, came to check us out. Um, not too many formation except one rock to explore, a lot of tiny little colorful fish and uh, just feeling super relaxed and thanks again for the invite man, that was awesome. Welcome back everyone for another adventure. In this edit, I spent a day diving in my own backyard for once and explore some new terrain. And follow that up a week later with a return trip to the World War II dry docks in Shimanis. The viz was sweet and the vibes were chill, so stay tuned. I was gonna dive tomorrow, but I opted to dive today because we're getting a monsoon tonight. Not really, but a atmospheric river, quote unquote. A lot of rain in the forecast and uh, probably gonna destroy the viz. I read a report today from Matrona that we got 15 meters right now. Barely any wind, not sure about the current, but worth it to jump in and explore. Here at uh, Piper's Lagoon with Eric. Never been to this spot, so uh, been on my list for a while. Finally get to check it off. This park is awesome. It's a must visit if you're in the area. What do you think? If we run fast enough, we might be able to clear it. Yeah, if we have a wingsuit or something. Yeah, so close yet so far. It's all part of the journey. We found a backup plan, we found a spot. Ugh. It's uh, kind of worth it to take the extra mile and uh, go to spots that other people wouldn't. With that said, I don't think scuba divers dive here because they got to hike in with all their bottles. Unless they're diving off boats, that could A, indicate it's not a spot worth diving, or B, indicate we're gonna find a hidden gem. I'm thinking the uh, first one, but either way, exciting. Better late than ever, but we're gonna jump in right now. Wind's picking up a bit, uh, but at least it's not raining. Don't have to worry about my camera gear getting soggy wet. Exploring a new area, woo! Wish us luck. When I hear reports of good visibility, I'm always a little torn. Do I head to a familiar spot that I know will be rewarding, or do I go and explore a new area and see it at its absolute best? Even epic spots on a bad visibility day might seem like a waste of time. So I don't want to be too quick to write off a spot if I only see it in the wrong light. The downside to this is if the conditions are some of the best you've seen all year and the spot is a letdown, well, you're kind of kicking yourself after. Luckily, that wasn't the case for us. Though the spot was far from a hidden gem, it did hold some unique structure, formations, and marine life. This was pretty cool. I call it the Highway of Perch. I've seen parrotfish swim like this in Bermuda, but never any species here in BC. This lone sea lion kept coming in to check us out. The horizontal visibility was great too. I could see him from 15 meters away. The perch seemed never ending. I'll be honest, besides perch and the odd greenling, this spot was rather lifeless. I'm happy I checked it out, but I doubt I'll be rushing back here anytime soon. It's a small step down from Neck Point, and Neck Point isn't one of my favorites. I was getting a little desperate for some footage. I finally added sea urchin to the menu, and I found the only spot without any in sight. Eric and his wife Natalie have been living in Nanaimo for the last year. They were living the dream and were sailing around the world beforehand. Eric's new to cold water diving, but he's making a seamless transition so far. Although inactive as of lately, they have a YouTube channel called Wander Sailing I suggest you check out. Hopefully we'll see some PNW content on there soon. Ah uh, yeah, I did see some rockfish. These two brown rockfish for example. Or are they coppers? Hard to tell. Give me your best guess in the comments. With the lack of fish to view, I did spend some time appreciating all the flora. All the plant life growing below resembled a tropical rainforest. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe these are the Puget Sound rockfish, one of the smallest species growing up to 18.3 centimeters with a lifespan of 22 years. Just as the report suggested, the visibility was crazy good. I saw it 15 meters. Uh, it wasn't an overly special spot, but still better than I thought it would be. Saw some pile perch, big schools of them. Had that sea line come up to us, and just being in that crystal clear water was uh, worth the venture. Cold though. You know, winter time's approaching. All good though. Gonna go back and uh, spend some time with the kids and have a fun evening before the storm comes tomorrow.
You ready for this one? Yeah, I'm excited. Water's looking pretty clear and really flat. So those are good things. It's not raining anymore, so that's nice. Light, light sprinkle. It's not snowing, that's a, that's a benefit. It's supposed to flurry, so it could be worse. Hey, it would be kind of cool if it snowed here in the water. I agree. I surfed when it was snowing, and I was pretty sweet. Garrett and Sarah met up for this one. We originally had plans to dive Gabriola, but the weather took a turn for the worse, and we didn't feel like battling 40 kilometer winds. So we settled on the dry docks. Let's get these new gloves and booties. These are Epsilon 5 millimeter open cell. They should keep my feet nice and toasty. Pick these up at Diving Sports. Same with these Bouchot three finger lobster Zoidberg gloves. And other five mil open saw as well. So they should keep my fingers and toes toasty today, hopefully. Garrett forgot his mask, so we ripped up to Walmart so we could grab a new one. He did the walk of shame and walked the aisles in his wetsuit and all. What a trooper. Note to self, keep a backup in the vehicle. Visibility here is looking crystal clear. It's gonna be a good dive, I know that much. It's not Gabriola, but at least the conditions were in our favor. The sky was beautiful, but we were here to explore below. Epic visibility, round two. This wreck is really a diamond in the rough. Although the dry dock sank unintentionally, it's now home to a vast array of life. Fortunately, when it sank, the environmental assessment deemed the platform to be of little concern. Without this superstructure here, the bottom would be just a structuralist mud pit. I'm not saying I'm happy it sank, I'm only trying to focus on the positive. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Subscribe to Uncharted Odyssey for some great content. I'm looking forward to seeing Garrett's footage. Sarah was also making herself at home amongst the anemones. And I think Garrett was thinking about moving in. If you want to see my other dives on this wreck, I'll leave a couple links in the description. I also provided some background information on how they ended up here. Nothing beats winter viz. All those chocolate milk and pea soup days we put up with really makes moments like this feel special. This guy's for sure a brown rockfish for reference. After the wreck, we spent some time in the shallows and searched around for old bottles, but came up short. If you have any leads on old docks from the 1800s with lots of history, send me a message as bottle diving is one of my favorite things to do in the winter. Cheers. Just finished the dive. It's really nice fizz. Lots of anemones. Diving that wreck is always a treat. I could not hold my breath for the life of me though. Uh, my breath holds today weren't cooperating, but that happens the other time. No problem. Still saw a lot of cool stuff and had a lot of fun just well, with the uh, crew. Wrapping things up now though, we're gonna head out to my place and uh, grab some pizza and bow down. And then I gotta go back to the mainland for work for another week. But fun dives. And oh, side note, those gloves kept me really warm. Uh, my hands are actually like hot doing the dive. Same with those booties. So those uh, mitten gloves, my go-to now in the winter time. All right, peace. Thanks for watching. Bye.